why is college soccer so bad? I mean, it sucks. College soccer is just the worst ever. So this is the notion of many people on the internet because this is the fourth most asked question as to why is college soccer so bad. So I think let's first dive into the fact that college soccer, of course, in my opinion, is not bad. It's actually quite a high level. There are players who have played college soccer and have gone on to the Premier League, even playing as high as Champions League. If you look at the Man City goalkeeper, Zach Steffen, you know, he went from playing college soccer to playing at the highest levels. You have Matt Turner, you have Tim Ream, you have Zev Taublieb. Okay, I didn't play the Premier League, but I went pro because of college soccer. So I think mostly it's an international notion that, look, how could you do school and soccer at the same time? And because of that, if you're really, really smart in school, then you probably suck at soccer, which we all know isn't true. You know, there are all these players, Flamini, who played for Arsenal, you know, he got his master's degree, so did Peter Cech, so did Mata. You know, there are tons of players who also go to school while they're playing soccer. And in America, the biggest thing is if you play in MLS, which would be amazing, say you go all the way up to the highest levels of MLS, I have a player that comes to mind, his name's Daniel Stairs, he played San Diego State, got drafted, then jumped around the USL, then finally did make a break into the MLS and he's making, you know, three to five hundred thousand dollars a year, which is amazing. And guess what? At some point, let's pretend he goes to 40, which was amazing. At some point, he's going to make zero dollars. Now, that doesn't happen in any other career. In every other career, you make a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, then maybe you stay here for the rest of your life, but you don't go to zero. As a professional athlete, you go from making a, a lot of money to zero. So if you're not mindful with your expenses, then of course you could get screwed. But I'm here to talk specifically about the college soccer aspect, which is to say, if you manage to play college soccer, you will have the best chance of playing pro soccer from my biased opinion, from somebody who's done it myself, as well as the numbers of other hundreds of other players, that's exactly how they're playing college soccer, is from pro soccer. And I actually have a video here. Uh, this is a gentleman that you all recognize. He played for the national team recently, and he played at Bayern Munich and then went to Crystal Palace. And depending on where you, when you watch this video, he may have changed. But he here is talking about how college soccer is what propelled him to eventually go pro. So the question, why is college soccer so bad? I would say college soccer is not bad. Now, there are different levels, in which case the levels can be not very good. So for example, if you're playing in the second division of NAIA, you know, that level is not the highest level. If you're playing division two soccer, division three soccer, that's phenomenal, okay? It's less than 5% of kids play at that level. If you play college soccer, for three years, four years, you can then go play semi-pro in the UPSL for sure, no problem. If you don't play college soccer, there's no chance you can go play semi-pro. And the UPSL, which is kind of that league, is definitely debatable on whether or not that's a good level. The highest level of UPSL, which is like semi-pro, is probably, you know, Division three esque level. Probably could compete with some lower-end Division two teams, but it's a it's a tough balance to be honest because a lot of those players in the UPSL aren't 90 minutes fit. You know, they're players who used to play and no longer play that much anymore. There's certainly talented players there, but college soccer would propel you to be able to play at a very competitive level. In fact, when I think about players who are, say, my age, I'm 30 now, they 100%, I know they're pretty damn good if they played college soccer. 
if you play that, that's amazing. Now, there are games within college soccer, many of which I've been a part of, where the quality of soccer is not very good, where it's kind of kickball, it's a hockey personality, where it's high press, high press, high press. Now, if you ask college coaches, they'll be like, no, 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 no. College soccer is like very good, and we play out of the back. And pretty much every coach, no coach are going to tell you like we we just hit it down the line. You know that's not what they would say because there's a negative notion with that. However, I do want to add to the point of why is college soccer bad. I think a lot of the coaches are responsible. There are many coaches who, frankly, have been coaching soccer for a very very long time never played, which doesn't make you a bad coach. Jose Mourinho never played. He was amazing co- coach. But some of the coaches, you know, they're so old school and they're so outdated and they are not good soccer coaches. And maybe they're really good people, which is awesome. Or maybe they have a master's degree or maybe they're not taking a salary and the team, the athletic director said, you know what, we need somebody to have to be the soccer coach. This guy's willing. We're going to pay him next to nothing. At least we have one. And that to me is kind of where ultimately when you say it's called soccer bad, that's ultimately where it is bad because there's a lot of ding-dongs out there who are coaching college soccer who, in my opinion, it's not just that they're doing a bad job coaching soccer. It's that they're not open-minded to learning the new modalities of the sport. You know, playing out of the back obviously comes to mind. Or they're, they, they've done the same thing for 40 years because that's how long they've been coaching. And they haven't necessarily not had success, but it's also been, you know, one year was successful because they had a really good team and then they haven't had success in 10 years. So the big message here is I want you guys to really be mindful of which coach you pick when you play college soccer because if you pick a coach that is bad, college soccer is bad and it is a miserable experience and the level's obnoxious and you're not really playing soccer, you're just kicking it back and forth. I loved my coach in college. We played soccer, but we did play on a terrible field, which inevitably led eventually to us kicking the crap out of it. And as a six, a defensive midfielder, I didn't touch the ball as much as I wanted. So that was really frustrating. Now, if you go play on a pitch with that's a nice grass pitch and have soccer-specific facilities, college soccer's facilities are un, excuse my French, like effing believable. They're unbelievable. The Division Three schools, their facilities are better than professional soccer teams in the second and third division in Spain or even in England. Like The facilities in America are by far the best overall. Like If you grouped it all together and you grouped a bunch of professional teams in the lower levels, it's much better. College soccer is much better. And if you do happen to talk to any internationals, most of them come over here going, oh, America sucks at soccer. And then they come and play and they're like, well, you know, they're pretty. They're actually pretty good, certainly athletic at the very least. The other argument you can make, make that college soccer isn't good is, well, the coaches that tend to coach in college at some point were club coaches, and some of your club coaches also are ding-dongs, and that's really frustrating. So furthermore, it's about the coaches. College soccer can be bad if you don't find the right coach, but if you find the right coach, college soccer is absolutely magnificent. And just to piggyback on that, the Division One level, Division Two level, and Division Three level, and NAI level, and there's another league called USCAA and Junior College. These are very competitive and very good soccer teams. So if you're like, I'm not gonna play college soccer, I'm just gonna go play pro. You're out of your freaking mind, and you're gonna lose out on an opportunity to play college soccer and be in a competitive environment with friends that you love and party on the weekends in a safe environment that you cannot do even when you go pro. You won't be able to have that type of lifestyle. So. College is just a a magnificent experience. And so the main message here is pick your coach correctly. And number two, yes, college soccer can be bad if you don't pick the right coach, which is basically what I said in number one. Focusing on finding the right coach is key. When you're debating between what college is to pick, which is probably where this question roughly stems from, you want to keep in mind that the levels are a gauge. So there are some Division three schools that are better than small level division one schools for sure and you may be like that's not possible but i can pretty much tell you the university of chicago which won the men's group are really really good john hopkins who won the women's group for ncaa are really really good and arguably competing with a low level d1 team for sure so it's not this is good this is bad it's black and white which has to do with the conference and really the coach i mean the coach is really going to determine everything if i haven't harped on that enough so If you want more help finding the right coach for you, that's what we are for. Give us a call. Link's in the bio and in the description, and I'll talk to you soon.